In this channel, we talk about elevating ideas that will move you from where you are to the next level. We talk about inspiring and empowering. Today, we are blessed to have a young and determined man who has created his own business and grown it over the years. So, Rajab Karume, we are so happy to have you. Tell us about yourself. My name is Rajab Karume and I'm into the fashion industry. I sell menswear, specifically casual stroke semi-casual wear. I also style people, I also dress celebrities. So you talked about celebrities. Yeah, Which yeah, yeah. celebrities do you dress? For example, Prezo, Steve Mbogo, Jaffi Weru. Yeah, those are some of the celebrities that I have dressed before. So tell us, how did the idea of going into business come about? So basically, I used to have a passion for fashion and I just love to dress and just look outstanding in everything. Then I used to stand out for my friends and they used to come up to me asking me where I get the clothes. <laughs> then funny enough, I used to sell to them the ones that I was wearing. So after some time of constantly nagging, them asking where I get the clothes and me selling to them my clothes and they were okay with it. Uh, that's when the idea hit me like, ah, so I can tap into my passion to something that I can make money with. That's how the idea came about. So that's the driving force to become an entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it also comes out that it's your passion. You love clothes. Tell us about that. From a very young age, <laughs> I used to just love seeing the way people are dressed and the way they look smart. So I used to like being in a position where I'd stand out from the rest. And I also have some knowledge in mixing and matching pieces in a way that it will look nice. So that's how the passion came about. And how did you come up with the name for the business? I just wanted to use my name as a brand. Like you see the way Gucci, the Chanel, just one simple name. That's where I got inspired. So I just Raja. wanted to use Raja. Raja. How did you raise funds for your venture? Because many people say it's very difficult to get money to start a business. How did you do it? First of all, when I was still dressing up and before I started business, I was doing aviation. But with time, I just found out that it's not for me. So I told my mom, instead of using that money and wasting it towards financing my school fees to something that I no longer have interest for, she could just give me a little capital so that I start my business. So I'm grateful she gave me that money. When I was starting the business, you know, I was still young and my mind was not so focused. So I ended up spending that money in a bad way. Then with time, I got out of business for a while. I just managed to hustle, hustle a bit. And that's when I became serious. So at least with that capital and after blowing it, then I hustled again and I started it out. Your story is a story of commitment, you know, to be able to pull yourself up then you fall and you still rise, you don't give up, you continue. What drives you? What makes you, what made you feel that you still had to continue? Yeah, I think what motivates me also is just the thought of being broke and the thought of being insignificant. That makes me work harder and makes me wake up early in the morning. It drives me towards my hustle, yeah. So you commit to your hustle because you don't even want to imagine a situation where you just get broke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Elevators, we say that everything starts with one step. So how did you get your first customer and then how did you build a customer base? Actually, my first customers, I got them from the way I was dressing. Then later on, I started getting referrals. Then with time, I opened up a social media page and I thank God, at least from that page, I've been getting referrals and yeah, I've been getting people from the internet. So your social media pages have become your biggest marketing strategy. I actually checked it out and I saw beautiful clothes for men and shoes and wallets and uh, the like. So you only deal with male clients? Yeah, just male clients, yeah. Okay. yeah. And you provide them with, what would you, how would you describe the style? Okay, it's sort of smart casual. It's not official, just the casual and a bit of funkiness also into it. Smart, casual, casual. funky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. <laughs> Let's talk about this thing. People say that entrepreneurs 
work for too many hours and that scares a lot of people. Is that true for you? How long do you work? From 9 a.m. to about 8 p.m. But you see the thing with doing the thing that you love, even if you work overtime, you don't get to realize that you're working overtime because you have a passion for it. You don't find like it's that much of a task. Unlike where you're employed or you're working for someone, within that, if they give you like an extra time, you'll find it's hard to cope with because maybe you don't have a passion for it. So it's a passion. It's a passion because they say when you're doing what you love, you don't even notice the time. And then if you're making money from it, even better. Oh my, tell us, how do you generate new ideas? Because clothes keep changing, your customers must keep coming back. How do you generate new ideas on how to keep them happy and coming back? Yeah, normally I follow social media pages of, the, of people globally. So I follow the outside trends and try to bring the international ideas and make them local over here. And there are also the fashion evolves very, very fast. So I try to keep up with their pace. So you go yeah. ahead, you bring ahead of many other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bring ahead of many other people. And also the problem with bringing things like here in Kenya ahead of many other people is sometimes when you bring the commodities here, they won't understand it. Then after about a year, it's when they're asking you, by the way, do you have that thing? Do you still have that thing? And you brought it much earlier on and they just couldn't figure it out. So what you're yeah. saying yeah. is that in Kenya, we are a bit slow so, yeah. in catching on to fashion. Yes, yes, And so yes. you have to wait. So you are, maybe your advantage is the timing? Yeah, even the timing, I must say. Like you see, in Kenya, comparable even to like Tanzania, they're ahead of us like in fashion and other things. Kenyans are a bit slow in picking fashion. Oh. Yeah. Do you sell to the region? No, 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 I don't. But I also see their stuff. That's why I know they are ahead. Now, apart from your social media, you have a retail outlet yes. in Nairobi. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's, actually, it. it's actually in town. There's that building called Yala Towers. Though I didn't start from there, I'd started from different places. And within that duration of time, there are also challenges that made me move from place to place. But now I thank God where I am, I'm comfortable with that place that I'm in. Though I faced a lot of challenges also, but I thank God they have not deterred me. They've actually made me stronger in pursuing what I love. So you say the challenges have made you stronger. What kind of challenges have you faced? Like sometimes there's this money that we pay goodwill before you enter a store. So maybe you pay a huge amount of it. Then you're supposed to stay at the store for maybe five years. Then all of a sudden, one morning, the owner just comes and says, you people have to move. They give you like five days notice. And you see, with five days notice and your clothes are there, you have no idea where you're taking them or where you're going or how you'll start again. You get so confused to the point of giving up and just saying like, I'm tired of this thing. But God is just there and he's managed to open up ways for me. Such challenges are really difficult. Sometimes also you order for stock from outside and you spent a lot of money. Then with the cargo and clearance things, you just find that the goods, either they get lost or uh, they're held up by KRA. Like now, there's some goods I'd ordered from Turkey, maybe about two years back, and up to now, I haven't received them. They just disappeared? Yeah, they just disappeared. And uh, the freight company, what are they saying? They just said they'll compensate, but you know, you can't wait for that. It's actually tough, but you see, with doing the thing that you love, it makes you harder. You're still committed. Yeah, I am. No matter how hard you push and commit to your hustle. Yes. Oh, great. You talked about um, facing up to the challenges, overcoming the challenges. Do you pray a lot about your business? Yes, I do pray. Yeah, I think even that's one thing that has actually elevated me. I really pray a lot about it. Tell us, what is your definition of success? Success is actually relative because to some people it can be money, but also, you can have so much money, but you don't have happiness. Part beneficial impact that you leave on society, maybe changing someone else's lives. It's also contentment, and it's being also on the righteous path. Yeah, so I'd put it in three perspectives. Being on the righteous path, contentment. Money is important too, but it's not success as such, but it is important. Wow, what a profound definition. Do you think there is a a kind of formula 
in becoming a successful entrepreneur? No, I don't think there's a formula as such. It just all amounts to working hard, being committed, dedicated, and having patience, and having faith also. I don't think there's a formula. Just base it upon that. Work hard, Work be hard. committed, yeah, be, be patient. consistent, patience, and put God the Almighty. Put ahead. God first. Yeah, yeah, put God first. Wow, and be grateful. And be grateful, yeah, oh, yeah, thank yeah. You. yeah. And humble. <laughs> Oh, you believe also humility has humility, a lot to play? Humility, yeah, it has a lot to play. How does humility help in business? I've seen also some people are not humble and they've been to the top and they've been brought down seriously. Yeah, I think it just blocks out the blessings also from God. Yeah, yeah, because the same God who elevated you, he's the same one who can also humiliate you. So in either case, you just have to be humble regardless and also you can't have as much. There's always somebody who will be more richer than you. There's always somebody who will be more prettier than you. There's always somebody who will have a better body than you. So just be humble. And be contented. Yeah, and be contented, yeah. But by being contented does not mean that you stay in a certain comfort zone. Yes. You also have to have the desire and hunger for more. But not to the point of being greedy. Yeah, don't be greedy, but be hungry. Yes. Then yes. you said commitment. Yeah, you, commitment. You say patience. Patience. Um, perseverance. perseverance. Yes, yes. Good. Yeah. I think those are very important lessons for anybody who is actually starting a business or seeking to grow their business. Now, let's look at uh, what one thing would you say makes you very happy about being in business? What do you enjoy? What gives you great satisfaction? The fact that I don't have to work hard for somebody else. Yeah, just that freedom because I don't like taking orders from people. So just being my own boss, at least, it, it makes me content. Though also it can make you lazy if you're not driven, you know. You can get relaxed and all that. How about when you see the happy faces of your clients? Yeah, that's the other thing. Especially when they refer you to somebody else with positive vibes. And also when they get satisfied the, with the product that you sold to them. Yeah, it gives me that contentment also. So, what kind of advice would you give uh, the many graduates who are looking to start a business and they say there are no jobs and they're looking to, what can I do? How can I start a business? What would you tell them? Most of the people, they wait for this perfect opportunity, perfect timing, perfect money, and you can't get that. I'll just tell you to start from where you are with what you have and the rest will fall in place and you don't have to be great to start but you have to start so that you can be great. To these young people, what would you say are three skills that would help them in developing in their agenda to be an entrepreneur? Some of these skills, you know, like you can research on them on YouTube because there's not just one skill that will help you get there and some of these ideas, they can check everything. These days, you know, we have the advantage of the internet and there's so many things, skills and strategies that would empower youths to get to where they want to be. So I just advise them to make the process of researching be their greatest friends, especially on YouTube. And they should just not waste time on the internet looking at irrelevant things that would not benefit them at all. So with YouTube, there's so many great videos of people out there that would help them towards propelling them in their future. Amazing, because I think a lot of young people are distracted by, when you go to the internet, they are distracted by the many pop-up stories that take you to stories about other people and they like gossip about this and that. Yes, yes, yes. But how do they focus? And you know, one click leads you to the next click and another one pops up and by the time you realize, you'll have noticed that you've wasted about three or four hours doing totally nothing, just going from one click to the next, following people's lives and these people who you're following they're making their lives better and you you're just here following their lives and you're getting depressed demotivated because you think now you 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 just cannot do anything at all you see so i just want them to focus and they have to have a pen and paper and jot down the points and everything like they should follow up some of these seminars their lectures motivation speakers they normally organize this kind of courses and everything they can do the research and find out where they're active because we also have Kenyan motivation speakers and all that. 
and they can go to such seminars and they'll benefit from, from that. So thank you so much. It was such a pleasure talking to you. And uh, these are elevating thoughts that can inspire other young people to be able to rise up. And I believe that if more people could come into business and be able to succeed like you have, then there will be less strife in the world. So thank you very much. We really appreciate your time and we wish you the very best.